Welcome to my channel. My name is Jody Edgar. I am the Shopify expert. Now I have a free course that I offer on my website, expertbymonday.com, and it is a complete walkthrough of the Shopify Dawn theme from beginning to end. So you can go and install the free theme, then do my free course and get up and running in a matter of hours. Now, if you prefer and you would like to follow the chapters, leave comments, have some progress in there, you can if you go to expertbymonday.com, sign up for the free course. For those who don't want to leave YouTube, that's why I've uploaded the entire thing here. So here's what you're going to get. You're going to get a complete walkthrough of all of the, of the chapter titles of using the Dawn theme. It's about an hour and a half of instruction and I offer as much insight as I possibly can without overwhelming you on how to use that theme. Now we are lucky enough that this particular uh, video has been brought to you by a sponsor. That sponsor is Talent Pop. We're going to stop halfway. I'll give you some explanation of what they're all about. But what I would ask is you just watch the whole thing through and hopefully you get some great information. Thank you very much for your time and without further ado, Let's go to chapter one. Good morning. It's morning. So that means we got to be going over the Dawn theme put out by Shopify. This course is going to be broken up into six chapters. First is going to be an overview where we're going to get used to the tools of the trade of what we're going to be doing. Then we're going to dive into the header. So the top part of your website. Once we complete that, we're going to go on to chapter three, which is going to be the template, the majority part of your website. That's where your images, your collections, all of your information is going to sit. Then we're going to go on to theme settings. So this is the look and the feel of your entire site the branding that goes along with that. Then we're going to have a little uh, message from our sponsor. And then in section number six, number six, I'm going to go over meta fields and I'm going to show you how to use dynamic meta fields in order to make your themes flexible. This is what the Dawn theme was originally designed to showcase was how to use meta fields in online store 2.0. So sit back, grab your coffee, and let's get started on becoming an expert by Monday. All right, we are talking about the theme customizer in this lesson. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna switch over to my computer so I can walk you through all of the pieces. All right, so when you've logged into Shopify, and this is the first time you've ever logged in here, you're gonna to come to this dashboard. Now, one of the things that you might be wondering is where are, where is my online store? Where is my um, uh, navigation to change my theme customizer? I only see these following items on the left-hand side. Now, you may or may not have online store added underneath sales channel. If you don't, and it's unpinned, so for example, you come into your, um, into your uh, uh, dashboard and you don't know where you go and actually edit your site. So what you wanna do is there's this, a button on the left-hand side that's called sales channels. When you click on this, it's gonna drop down the search. So if you look up here, you can see it's gone and dropped down the search here. The one we're looking for is online store. Once you click on online store, it's going to add a new navigation to the left-hand side. Now here's what I recommend. I highly, highly recommend you pin this because I mean, this is your online store. You're gonna be modifying your online store quite a bit and you don't wanna to have to have four or five clicks every time you go into it. So we want that online store uh, navigation pinned right at the top. This is where we're gonna go in and edit our theme. Now, if you're loading up Shopify for the first time, it's going to install the Dawn theme by default. It's the first theme that they install. If you have Shopify for a little bit of a while and you wanna try out Dawn theme for online store 2.0, you're gonna to need to install it. So the way you do that is you go to the bottom of the theme page and it's got popular themes and it's got the Dawn theme by Shopify. You hit add and bam, it's gonna throw it directly into your theme customizer. Now you can choose to whether have it as a, uh, a, a draft theme or the live theme. When you add it, it's gonna add it as a draft theme into the theme library. I have gone and published one because I don't wanna worry about for this demo uh, preview links and stuff like that and this is a demo store. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the customize button here. Uh, if we zoom in here, this is the button we wanna go into in order to customize our theme. So let's go into the theme customizer. All right, so we are in the theme customizer. I'm gonna go over the overall things around the outside so you know where we're working. 
first on the top left if we start in the top left hand corner we have our exit this is what takes us out the next we have our theme name and we have our status which one are we working on are we working on the draft one or are we working on the live one and then you have the skewer menu or the meatball menu whichever one you want to call it and if you hit that drop down you've got a couple of options you've got your version number in here so this is important because uh, there are versions that continually being updated all the time if they're a point, point zero before the point zero, it's a minor update, maybe a security update or a bug update. If it's a point one, it's a it's not a major update, but it is a significant update. So there's probably a new feature that has come out. And then if it is a um, a, a, the first number, that means it's a complete update, which means you pr probably need to rebuild your store on that new theme. Um, it's got the designer down below. So if you're wondering who made your theme, it's gonna have that there. We have shortcuts to edit code. We are not going to go over any code editing in this lesson. We are only going to do no code options on this one. But this is where you're going to go and get into the HTML and the CSS and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, you've got your default theme content. So what is the, what's the content that's going to get loaded into the theme by default? We'll go over that. Uh, the next is how we're going to view this um, this theme. Now, if you're using a development theme, it's not the active theme. This is where you're going to go to create a preview link our documentation, and if you need support. Also, if you need support, you can contact my company, Sumble. We would be happy to help you figure anything out for here. All right, moving along the top menu, we now have our page template selector. So if you drop this down, it's gonna show you all of the different templates inside of Shopify, how they're all set up. So you've got homepage, you've got products, you've got collections, you've got collection lists, you've got pages, blogs, blog posts, cart, and checkout. We're gonna use this a lot when we start going through the theme customizer because I'm gonna show you how to preview the stuff that you're creating. Next, you have this here, which is the inspector. Um, if you're on an element, you see this, these blue lines show up around an element. This here, this here, this is being done by the inspector. If you turn this off, you no longer have those blue elements showing up. So you can use the site as you want and turn that back on. One thing I'm gonna mention now is that if you're using custom JavaScripts inside the uh, theme customizer, they won't work. This customizer disables all JavaScript stuff. So say you've installed a uh, custom code and you can't figure out why it's not working, it won't work as a previewer inside the theme customizer. All right, moving along. On the top right-hand corner, we have our type. So we have whether we want to preview it on mobile, or whether we want to preview it on desktop or for full screen. To be honest, I highly recommend you start on mobile. Don't even look at the desktop yet. Most users are going to be using your website on mobile. You need to get the mobile part first right. It's easier to change the desktop experience later on, but the mobile version should be paramount for all e-commerce stuff. We've got our undo and our redo buttons, and then we have our save button uh, as well. Uh, along the left-hand side, we have three buttons to keep in mind. We have our sections, so this is where we're going to be moving our stuff around. We then have our theme settings, so these are global settings. These are things for the entire website. Um, and then finally, we have embedded apps. This is a new upgrade to Shopify, which instead of copying the app code into the theme, you just install it on the store, um, it installs the code for you, and then if you remove it, it removes the code for you, which is a huge, huge upgrade because before, Shopify would leave code on your site and it would slow down if you installed a bunch of apps and stuff like that. With new embedded apps, that is no longer a problem. All right. And then along this drop down menu here, this is where we're going to do be doing most of our work. Uh, when we click on an element, it will either load up on the left hand side, depending on your monitor size. I have a smaller monitor so that we get this nice layout with my face and the, the stuff over there. Um, but if you have a wider monitor, what will happen is this stuff will kick over to the right hand side and it'll show up here um, on, on, on this side over here. Um, so just remember that if you're like, why is it doesn't look the same on my computer as it does on his? It's because the things switch depending on the size of the screen. All right, that is a complete overview of the theme customizer dashboard. Next, we're gonna go into creating templates and how we use templates in order to change the content uh, depending on which kind of page that we're on. So stay tuned for that next. All right, Shopify uses templates in different forms and fashions. Essentially, a template is a set of code that is applied to a specific page type. So if you have a page, that page is going to have a template. If you have a blog, that blog is going to have a, have a template. 
you install your theme, your theme is your high level um, code, then you install templates for your pages, and then each individual page has sections and blocks. We're gonna go over the difference on those in the next section, but for now, I wanna show you where we go and set up templates inside of Shopify so that when we refer back to them later, you know what I'm talking about. So let's go to my screen. All right, so when we're on the theme customizer, and if you go to that middle menu that I talked about in the last uh, overview, you can see you have a bunch of page types here. So you have your product page, you have your uh, regular page, you have your collection list. I'm gonna use a regular page just to keep things simple. But if we go into pages, we can go and create a template. Now the big difference between templates in Online Store 2.0 and Online Store Original is that you used to have to have that template inside the theme. It was required to be inside the theme in order for you to use it. Now in Online Store 2.0, you can create a theme and it's available on both or you can create a template and it's available on both your themes so that you don't have to go through this big hoops of duplicating code. You just have to create it once. So I'm gonna go and create a, a, a page template and this is gonna be sample page. Let's just put this in here, sample page. I can choose whether I want to base it, on, base it on an existing template that's already there and then just make my changes to that. So say for example, I'm, can, I'm creating a bunch of different brand type um, product pages and I just want to modify a couple of pieces for it, I can make one additional page and then copy it along. I'm going to just go based on the default page and then I'm going to go and create it. Now, once you've created this page, um, you're going to need to go and assign it. Now, the place that you go and assign this template is actually back in the theme editor so or in the Shopify editor. So if you exit out of the um, the theme customizer, you go to the 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 place where you created the item. So if we want pages, it's going to be under online store. And if we go to a page, so let's go and create a sample page here. You'll see in the bottom right hand corner, this is where your page templates are. So I can go and click my sample page and now my sample page and my template pages are assigned. Okay. And if we go back over to the theme customizer and we go into the Dawn theme, and we go back to the page that we were on, pages, we can see now sample page has one theme template applied to it. Now, why would you wanna do this? The reason that you wanna set all of these things up is often there are small little differences that you wanna put on a content page. So let's take for example, pages are easiest thing to understand. So you have a contact page, which might have a map. It might have a stock list on it. It may have different, it might have a contact form on it versus a content page where you're just talking about your business and your content page might have a collage of images on it. Now those are both page templates and in the previous Shopify system, you needed to do if statements and all sorts of fancy coding in order to use one template around on multiple pages. Now in Shopify 2.0, you have individual templates. And that's kind of how the whole thing is set up. All right, so that is it for creating templates. Next, we're gonna move on to an explanation about the differences between templates, sections, blocks, themes, all that sort of stuff so that you are in the know. All right, let's take a minute and talk about the language that we use inside of Shopify. Now, the Shopify reuses a number of their anchor words throughout their entire system. And it's important to understand the context between each one. So when we're talking about Shopify proper, when we're talking about their software, that's the thing that runs by the servers. That's the thing that serves up the content. That's the thing that manages all the payments. That's the Shopify system, okay? In order to use that Shopify system, you need a theme. And that theme is your Dawn theme or your pipeline theme or your impact or your prestige, those are your themes, right? Those are the ones that actually render the work that Shopify is doing in the back end. Now, once you're into those themes, you have different section types inside of the, uh, the system. Now, this is what I mean by it gets complicated. I'm using sections in order to delineate between pages and blogs and a product and collections, okay? So each one of those template types or page types may contain a template. So you can have a page module and that page model module has a, a page template. 
Now on that page template, those page templates are split up by sections, okay? And each one of those sections has blocks on it, so blocks of code. So if we look at it from a high level, we have Shopify, then we have our theme, and then we have our tem template, so a product template. And then on that product template, we have a section. And then on a pro on, in that section, those sections are made up of blocks. And then each one of those blocks has an element. This will make a lot more sense once we start working through it, but I just wanted to talk about it up front. So sometimes when we're talking about sections, we're talking about different places on a page. Sometimes when we're talking about sections, we're actually talking about a different section inside of Shopify, like the product section or the settings section. Sometimes when we're talking about a theme, we're talking about the theme, the overall piece. And sometimes when we're talking about theme, we're talking about what is the color theme of the specific website. So as you can see, the, the different terms are interchangeable with inside of Shopify. I will try my best to uh, quantify them every time that we're doing it. But if you have any questions of what I'm talking about, there's a discussion link down below and you can use that in order to ask me questions. All right, let's jump into chapter two and let's go over all of the things inside the DOM theme. All right, first lesson of chapter two. So let's Hop over to my computer and let's go into the theme customizer. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to go down to online store. We're going to go to themes. We're going to go into customize. Once we are in the customizer, we are looking at this group at the top here. So again, talking about how the language gets used a multiple times with inside of Shopify, you have your header group, which signifies the top piece of your uh, template. Um, and then we have a header section. We're first going to go over the announcement bar. So if you click on the announcement bar, this is the announcement bar section. And it only comes with one option, uh, which is custom CSS. You can only modify the, uh, the CSS inside of this section. Now, if you're using a different type of section, I'll just show you here. Sometimes there are way more options, but we're going to start off easy with the announcement bar. So we have the announcement bar section, which allows us to do custom CSS. We're not going to do any custom CSS in this course. Um, we'll, we'll tackle that at another time. Um, so under the announcement bar, it comes with a, a option for a block. Now, if you hit annou add announcement, it's just gonna add one block type. As we get farther through this, this will give us more options. So for example, if we're down under feature product here, uh, you see we have text, title, price, we have a bunch of different blocks that we can add. In this particular uh, situation, because we're only talking about the top announcement bar, we only have the option to add one block in there, which is the announcements. So when we add that, as you can see, I've added two in here. So now it's got welcome to our store and welcome to our store. Um, if I add another one, another one is going to go in there as well. Uh, you can add up to 16. I wouldn't recommend putting in 16. That's a lot of announcements. You probably want to keep it down to one. Um, but that is available to you if you want to do it. Now, when you click on one of these items, you can also remove the block down below. I'm a little zoomed in, so you can see I have to scroll a bit. Uh, let's go down here and remove this. Great. Now let's go over what actually happens. And this is, these are the elements of a specific block. So we have our, um, our text. So welcome to sh our store. Or if we want to change this to shipping information, right? We can go and do that. And once we do that, we'll see the preview changing on the right hand side. We can change our text alignment, whether we want it on the left, uh, whether we want it on the right. Uh, whether we want it in the center, depending on what kind of style you want to do. All of those are acceptable. You have your color scheme, background one or background two. Um, all of the color schemes are set up underneath theme setting on the left-hand side. That is chapter three, I believe, uh, theme settings. Uh, no, chapter five. Chapter five is where we're going to be going over theme settings, where we can change colors and stuff like that. Then you have your link. And in link, if we click on the link, this allows you to choose which page you want um, the link to go to. Or maybe you want it to go to a product, or whether you want it to go to uh, terms of service or a policy or something like that. That's where you would go and do that. Now, uh, there's a couple other links here on the left-hand side. This is so that you can view it. When you click on it, it's going to open it up in a new browser window. So if you click on that, you'll see it opens it up so it doesn't lose the place that you're in. Um, and then we have this connect dy dynamic source. Now, we are going to go over dynamic sources 
in chapter six when we go over meta fields. It's a little bit to get your brain around, so we're gonna leave that till the last section once you're already used to everything inside of uh, the Shopify Dawn theme, and then we'll go over to that. All right, that basically concludes the options that you have for the announcement bar. We're starting off kind of slow. We're gonna go through the rest of the sections. They're gonna become more complex, but next up, we're gonna go over the header. All right, we're talking about the header section now. So let's go back over to the screen. All right, when we are on the header section, this is the item that we're talking about here, which is header. So a couple things with header. So header only is a section. It doesn't support any blocks. So as you can see underneath the announcement bar, we have a, an ability to add another announcement and so on and so forth, and that'll build out blocks. But header does not have that option. So all we have is the settings that are provided with inside of the theme. So first, color. This is, so this is the color scheme. Again, we are gonna be changing that when we go over theme settings, which is found over here under the paintbrush. This theme settings button is a quick link. It just takes us over to theme settings uh, and then we can bounce back and forth. Any changes that you make will change just that, uh, will change in both places. Um, so when you like click on it, you can see it just takes us over to theme settings and you, it actually highlights it that we've moved over. All right, if we go back to sections, we go into header. Um, we can change the desktop logo position. Now there are two options here. There's one for desktop and there's one for mobile. And you might be asking yourself, well, what about like tablets and iPads? Generally speaking, iPads will inherit the stuff from the mobile side. So when you're working on your site, and I can't say this enough, you wanna make sure that you are on the mobile view when you're building things. You never want to build things in the desktop view because what will happen is you'll get down to the mobile and you realize those options don't don't exist and then you'll have to redo it. So uh, always start from a mobile first approach. And we're, I think it's at 75% of people now are using mobile uh, to browse browse the net. So it only makes sense that you start with mobile and get your mobile, a mobile setup set up first. One of the things that's tricky is a lot of these software companies give you this nice desktop view but it doesn't accurately represent what your customer is using. Your customers are using their phones. All right, coming down, we have our desktop menu type, so we can decide whether it's a mega menu or a uh, drop-down menu. And then we have our, sti our sticky a sticky header. Uh, so this was, a, this was a customization we did a lot of um, in years past, and I'm so glad to see it being added into the Dawn theme. So you can have no sticky header, so when you scroll, you can see the header disappears with you. You could have it uh, on scroll up only, so when you're scrolling down, it disappears, but when you come back up, it, it, it shows up. You can have it always as a sticky menu. So as you scroll, it's always sticky. Um, and then, or you can have it reduce the logo size when you scroll. So sometimes you can get a big logo um, when it shows, and then as you scroll, it, it shrinks that logo down. Uh, it doesn't do it with text. It only does it with a logo that you have added in there. Uh, there's the option for a separator line. I recommend just adding that nice little detail in there. That separator line is good. Mobile layout, again, you can decide where your logo position is. Um, and then you have some spacing. So you can decide if you wanna add a little bit of spacing on the bottom of uh, from your header. You can see it bumps everything down. Or you can add some padding and padding take place inside the box. So if you go padding, what you'll see happen is the top padding, it makes it a little bit a little bit fatter, a little taller. You can do that with the top and with the bottom. Uh, down again here at the bottom, you have your uh, theme settings, again, jumping you over to the theme settings, and then you have your custom CSS. We're not gonna go over any uh, custom CSS in this uh, section. We might do a little bit later, um, but basically you have the ability to change your CSS specifically for this element. It won't be global CSS, which we'll go over at another point, but each element or each section inside of the Dawn theme has the ability for custom CSS, which is a really welcomed update. All right, that is everything for the header section. Next up, we're gonna talk about custom liquid. All right, the last section that you are able to add to the Dawn theme is custom liquid. Let's go over the screen, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if you are 
in the header group, you have the option here to add a section and custom liquid. As you can see, there is only, it's the only uh, theme section that's available for this group. You hit custom liquid, and then you can go into it. Now, custom liquid, just like header, has no blocks. It's just custom liquid, and it allows you to write custom liquid code. Now, I'm not going to go deep into what liquid code is and how it all works, but I'll give you a quick preview. So it uses curly braces, sometimes known as mustache quotes. So let's go and do that. And then we are going to use theme.name. And what that will do is that will render what the theme name is. And as you can see here on the, on the right hand side, it's gone and put the theme name in there. Now you can also add, I believe you can add HTML in here as well. So if I go div uh, style equals um, align center. Oops, let me learn how to spell, ladies and gentlemen. And we go here, close that off. I believe it should render that. It doesn't look like it. That should do it. Um, let's go margin auto and then width 100 pixels. Let's see if that. It does. Okay, great. So you can go and write your own custom code in there. Um, you can go and change the color scheme. So if you want to have it grab the section and change the background of it, you can do the padding. So you can reduce the padding on that specific, sec specific section. And it looks like, oh, look at this. You can remove your styles, but you can put your styles in here. So if you are, you know, writing something, so say let's do a class and we're going to call it custom just call it custom um, and then in here we can go dot custom and we can go align uh, center um, we can go and add our width that we had before which was 100 pixels oops sorry and we have our margin um, which is set to auto now, one of the great things that this allows us to do is it really allows us to um, separate out our code and from our styling. Uh, in the past, what we would have to do is put our styling in line with the stuff that we were doing and it got really messy. But with these custom code modules, it really makes it easy for us to go and modify and change things and really have the flexibility to change the things that need to be changed all the time and as well as keep the things separated out from our, um, our other elements. So we can grab this and say we wanted to put this at the top. And so we wanted to uh, change this actually to, there's the, there's the custom liquid. Uh, and we're just gonna call this demo. So it says Dawn theme demo. So now we know across our whole organ our whole thing what is going on. All right, that wraps us up for our sections inside the header. Next up, we're going to start diving into the template, the meat of what's going on inside the Dawn theme. All right, welcome to chapter three. So in this chapter, we are going to be going through each individual section that you're going to be using on your homepage. Now, these sections also mimic on pages and subsequent uh, sections. But for this particular uh, class, we're just going to go through all of those sections. Now, we're going to go through them pretty quickly. So if you look at the course, there's going to be a number of uh, modules in this, um, but they won't be very long. So you can blast through them pretty quickly. So let's get started with featured collections. Let's move over to my screen. All right, when we're on the screen, we are going to go into customize as we are very familiar and we are going to load up all of the sections. Now I've gone and loaded up all the sections for us ahead of time. Uh, this will just save us a little bit of time adding them all in there. Uh, but if we contract all of these guys here and we come down the bottom, add a section, you can see these are where the sections are. Now note, there is a show more button. You can click the show more button and it will come down and will load up the rest of them. Just if you're wondering where a specific section is, you can load that up, especially in premium themes. Premium themes do have a lot of sections that you can take advantage of. But in the Dawn theme, 
Uh, there's only about six or seven that don't show on that list. All right, starting off with Feature Collection. So let's open up Feature Collection. Now, Feature Collection, we can see it showing here on the right-hand side. If we turn on the inspector, uh, you'll see a little tab show up at the top. This little tab up here shows you which, uh, which section you're working with. Now, Feature Collection, we've got some pretty basic elements. We've got our heading, uh, Feature Collection. We got our heading size. So if we want to change it to a larger one, if we want to change it to a smaller one, we can change those around. We can add a description. So our Feature products feature oops our featured products great once we do that it'll add a little bit of some text in there um do, 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 do. we can decide to show the um the, the the collection description from the admin um, and so if you're in the Shopify admin, you can show the collection description right on the page, or you can decide to not show it at all. So we're going to go not show it at all because we're not going to put that in there. Description title, we can decide whether it's going to be a body, subtitle, or uppercase. And then we're going to select our collection. So I've loaded up <clears throat> some sample products. Shout out to Simple Sat, Simple Sat, ugh, Simple Sample Data, a great app that I use all the time. It's really awesome. It allows you to load a bunch of stuff into your store uh, to test things out without having to find product imagery and stuff like that. All right, so we've got our collection already loaded up. We can choose how many products to show. So if we wanna show eight products, we can do that. We can go down to four products. We can go number of columns on desktop. Now this is why, again, uh, you wanna be switching between both mobile and desktop when you're designing these things uh, because on the mobile side of things, this slider doesn't do anything. Um, and this is why you wanna build your experience on the slider on the mobile side first. Uh, we have our view all buttons, uh, view all style, uh, view all, uh, view all button style. So we can go a solid button, outline button. This is if our products, if, or if our collection has more than uh, four products in it. So let's go here, let's go down here, maximum number of products. What if we put this down to two? Yes, if we go down to two, we can see that view all button show up. And then if we go to a link, it's just a simple link. And then we have an outline button, gives us an outline button and a solid button. My recommendation is you should be able to stand 10 feet back from a website and see exactly what the next button is you need to hit. If you can't, you need to work on making sure your call to actions are a lot clearer. So uh, when deciding on which button is, keep that in mind while you're putting that together. Uh, carousel on desktop, this is if you want to have the ability, let's go over to desktop here, to have a carousel of uh, products going through. Um, so if we go number of columns, no, if we would have to go number of products to show. That way we now have a carousel here where it will slide along. Uh, but again, we wanna be focused on the mobile experience. So let's go back over to mobile. Okay, we've got our color scheme, so we can change the background if we wanted to, you know, separate out the background a little bit to show that we're in a different section. These images don't have transparent backgrounds, so we get these white boxes showing up. So I'm gonna go with our original first background. Now we go down to our product card. So product cards, these are the individual products and their cards, so we can show a second image on hover. Um, now this is not gonna do anything in a mobile because in a mobile, you only have a finger. You don't have the ability to hover. Again, another reason why you wanna make sure that you're doing the mobile thing first. Show vendor, so we can see the vendor of who it was made by, Adidas there. Uh, show product rating, I think that's probably a good idea. None of these products have product ratings on it, so that's not gonna show up. Um, but um, you can also enable a quick add button. So if you wanna choose your option and add, add it to uh, a cart, you can, you can do that. Mobile layout, uh, again, we've got a couple things. Uh, enable swipe on mobile, so you can actually swipe through it. This, isn't not, this is not a bad experience, this is actually quite nice. Uh, keep the, the thing up nice and tight. Uh, but keep in mind, the more images you load on the page, the slower your page is gonna load. So you don't wanna go and put all of your products on your homepage, it's just too much. It's gonna be really slow when it loads. All right, and then coming down the bottom, we have our trusty CSS section. So we have our little section at the bottom. And that wraps up everything for the featured collection section. Uh, it doesn't have any blocks in it. This particular featured collection section is just a section settings. All right, that's it for that one. We are gonna be moving on to featured product next. So a featured collection, 
brings in multiple numbers of products and displays them on a page. A featured product takes a specific product and then shows a lot about that specific product. So let's go on to that section. All right, we zoom in here on the left hand side where you can see we have the featured product section. If you want to add it, you can go down to sections and you can go featured products. It's the next one on the list. Now, when you open up featured products, you'll notice that it has this little arrow on the left hand side. This means that it has sub blocks to it. So you can go and add blocks and build it out. So say for example, you have, let's go here, title. You have your title right here and you wanted to add a secondary subtitle to it. So I could go in here, add a block, add text, drag that up so that it's below this text, hit on the text blocks, and I can put in here subtitle. And when I do that, let's go back here, we can see we get our subtitle showing up. Now there's nothing under this text. So this is using, um, in here it's using a dynamic meta field. But since nothing is set up underneath this product, we're gonna actually delete that and we are gonna call this heading. We're gonna get into dynamic stuff, like I said, later on. Um, but I want, to, um, I want to show you how this sections work before we do that. All right, if we go back here. So now we have our heading, number one, and we have our subtitle, number two. Now I've added in a text block. This heading block here um, is saved as an uppercase, but I can also go and set it as a subtitle or I can set it as body. Those are different styles that are being used for um, each individual size, which are gonna be set underneath theme settings. So now we've got our heading, we have our subtitle, okay? Coming down in our blocks, we have our title card, which is um, if you go and add a block in, you can see under here, we have only one title card is allowed. So if you want to move the title card, you can move the title card up to the top, you can have multiple text blocks, but you can only have one title card. Now these blocks are decided by the theme developer. They have put restrictions around which blocks you're allowed to add and how many you're allowed to add them. Those things are changeable. You can change how many go in there. So it's not limited, but um, the decisions that have been made by the designer who created the theme, these are to best support you going forward so you don't end up putting in a bunch of stuff that doesn't make any sense. All right, next up we have our price. So a price is just a simple um, block that has no uh, customization to it. We have our variant picker. So we can, if we have multiple variants available, we can do that. We can do a drop down, which is just a uh, drop down item or pills, which are the small little um, callouts that go in there. We have our quantity selector if we want them to be able to add the quantities of it. We have our buy button, which is a simple buy button. Uh, the show dynamic checkout button will change the, um, the, the sold out or add to cart depending on what the, what the inventory value of that specific product is. Uh, and then we have our social share, which allows the people to share it with a link. Uh, we can go and add additional blocks in here. Now, this has some blocks that are not initially loaded in, so it's good to know what those are. We have text, we have SKU, so if we wanted to say put the SKU in here, list the SKU, we could do that. Let's see here, grab this SKU, let's put it up there underneath the title if we wanted to have it there. Um, if we wanted to add custom liquid, we could go and do that. We could add product rating and we can add icons with text. So if we go icons with text, we can have, let's click on those and we can go in and we can see we have a heart icon heading, uh, we have a return icon, and then we have a, um, what's the third one here? A truck icon for shipping. So you have a bunch of different options of what you wanna add in there. And you'll notice is as you add blocks that are no longer available, they come off of this list. So you can't add them twice by accident. All right, that's a quick overview of feature products. Next up is collection lists. Moving on to collection lists. This is exactly what it sounds like. It is a list of collections. So let's go over and see how we can configure it. So we have our collection list on the side here. This is, oh, let's get rid of that there. Uh, collection list on the side here. If you go into the top heading part of it, you have a couple options. You've got your heading, you've got your heading sizes, you've got your aspect ratio of your images. So which image, how you want your images to show up. Probably you're gonna either wanna decide on square or you wanna go aspect to image, adapt to image. Um, 
it would depend on what kind of images that you're working with, with, with what option that you're going to use there. Number of columns on desktop, again, a desktop only thing, our color scheme and enable view all button. Um, and then we have the similar things for the mobile layout. Now, when we want to add a collection, we simply add a block, which is a collection. So let's grab this one. Let's select a collection from our store. So I'm going to go a six tiger. Great. Um, let's close that there. Once I've selected, oops, I have to save it. Sorry. So a six tiger. So one of the things that you have to do, um, is hit the select button at the bottom. I was zoomed out. I did not see that. I'm going to hit save here. That's going to save my theme. Um, and then I can maybe even add a second collection here. Let's add the, the Adidas one in here as well. Okay, great. Now when you go and change uh, the settings of the collection list. So say you want to change the way the images are shown. You can't do it individually. You have to do it for all of them. So say if I change them to portrait, you can see what happens. It, 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 it's, it's scaling everything to its maximum height and then it's cropping off the size sides. If we scale this to square, it's going to put things in a square and it's going to zoom the image to that square. So it's going to give a similar effect, but uh, drop it back. If we go to adapt to image, then it's going to shrink the box to fit the image, whether it's height or low. But what you'll see is this one and this one are going to be different sizes. So depending on what you want your situation to be, you should have all of your logos size to the correct size before you upload them to um, to Shopify. They should be all be the same dimensions. All right, that is it for collection lists. Next, we are going over to rich text. Moving on to rich text, let's go over the screen and see what we're working with. All right, rich text here on the left. Let's zoom in and have a look at this at the at the section. So again, this because it has an arrow, it has contains multiple blocks. If you go into rich text itself, you can decide on how you want this position. So we're talking about your brand here. So this is the desktop position. Uh, it doesn't do anything on mobile. So if we go into desktop, we'll see what happens here. So if we want the desktop position, uh, let's go to image banner. We want where are, we, where are we at here? Where are we at here? There we go. Talk about your brand. So there it is. It's put down here. If we want to switch this to the center, it's going to move it to the center. And then we move it to the right. It's going to move it over to the right. Uh, we're going to put it in the center and we're going to go back over to mobile. Again, this is where you think it's not uh, paying attention to you, but it's because it's on a different size. Um, all right. Uh, alignment. This is the content. This content inside it. How you want the content aligned, whether you want it left, right, or centered. You got our backgrounds like we normally would and make the section full width. So so what this is going to do is it's going to stretch the container to match the entire side. If you don't do that, it indents quite a bit and it gives it a little bit more uh, padding around the outside. We have our section paddings and again, we have our CSS. And that is what we're talking about for rich text. Next up, image and text. All right, image with banner is a banner image, which basically allows you to put a large image across with some text and some actions down below. So let's go to the screen. And although this is very similar to image with text, it gives us a little bit more flexibility. As you can see, this is the one we're working with here. Now under image with banner, if you first click into it, you can have uh, the first image that shows up. So let's say we wanna go and choose these trees. Let's choose the tree, okay? And then the second image, we can go and choose the mountainscape. So this is the one that comes down after it. So it can be, you can, it can hide, it can surround the image. Let's have a look at what this looks like on desktop. If it's on desktop, image and banner, it puts them side by side. So a kind of a totally different effect when you're on the mobile side of things. All right. Uh, this is our one here. Now we can change our image overlay opacity. So if we want to um, make the opacity of the color that's overlaying over the image to kind of give it a little bit more of a stylistic approach, we can go and do that. Uh, we've got some co uh, desktop content positioning items here and desktop alignment as well, and then color scheme. And then again, we have the mobile layout down below. This one is a uh, pretty self-explanatory. It's just another way of arranging your content inside of Shopify. 
when you're coming, when you're we're dealing with different banners. Now, if we go back over here, image banner also comes with a couple of blocks. Let me go back over to my screen again. And we're gonna talk about the uh, the blocks that you can have. Now, this only allows you to add three blocks in here. Uh, let's go back here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's go back. So as you can see, this is the first one that has graded out once all three blocks are used. So if we wanna change our buttons, we can go in and change our buttons. If we go down to the bottom and remove the, the block for the buttons, we can just have the image, the text, and then the image. Um, and then we have the option to go and add the, the, the button back in. But a lot of these sections are designed to limit you to what, you're, uh, what the section is able to do. Um, and if you go into any of these blocks, you can, you can see the options that are available to you there. All right. The next thing that's coming up, image banner was two static images and you might want to see some slideshows. So we're gonna load that up next. All right, we're talking about slideshows. Now slideshows are a very misunderstood user element. We're not gonna get into the should you or shouldn't you use a slideshow or where you should use it. We're gonna just show you how the how this section works inside this theme. So let's go over to our screen. All right, you're gonna go and add the section in like you normally would, it's gonna be called slideshow. Uh, if you're on the section itself, it's going to give you some um, configuration options. You can have your um, your full width, you can have your grid. Let's go to let's go to a slideshow here. Um, we can take the sake, uh, we can select the slideshow uh, height if we want. Um, and then we can take choose the paginations, whether we want um, numbers or whether we want a counter you know, it's one of, two of, that sort of thing, okay? We can auto-rotate the slides if we want to, and then we can choose how long they go. Now, if you want to add a slide to a slider, that's when you're gonna go in here and add the slide box in there. You can go and select your image, and then you can fill out the fields like we have been doing numbers of times before. Now, this is really important to remember, you only have a limit of 16 slides to put in here. You shouldn't be using 16 slides, but you do have a limit of how many you can load onto a, onto a page. So they use individual blocks, one for each slide, in order for you to be able to configure the slideshow. All right, that's it for slideshow. We are now moving on to a collapsible menu. So a collapsible menu is something that you would use if you were showing shipping details or you know product specs or you were showing a special um, let's say you were doing nutritional facts. Those types of things are the things that are gonna be going underneath a, um, a collapsible menu. Let's go over and look how they're configured. So we've added the section in here called collapsible content. This is uh, in here. If you click on it, you can see the overall settings and the stuff that goes in there. You have a caption that you can add in there. So let's go nutritional. Facts, maybe, and we've got our little a little block that has at the top. Uh, we've got a couple different text options. We have our heading, our heading size. If we want to make it larger, we can do that. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe make it pull out a little bit. Medium is probably a pretty good place for most people to be. Your layout, whether you wanted a section container um, or whether you wanted a row container. Um, I think the row container probably looks the best for this design because we're kind of going with a two-tone display. We can go and add an image. So if we wanted to add an image to this um, this particular section, we could do that so that we have our you know our landscape or our farming uh, area. We can change our aspect ratio. So if we want to change it to a small, a large, or a um, or adapt to the image. We're gonna do adapt. Uh, desktop, you have your own stuff. And then again, down to the section paddings, theme settings, and custom CSS. So that is the section changes. In order to add a collapsible row, you simply add a block. So you're adding a block. We have our, caps, uh, our row, and we are gonna go um, FDA restrictions, maybe. Restrictions. And then you can go and choose which icon you want to have next to it. So, you know, we can go maybe if we wanted to go dairy free or something like that. And we can put the content in there. Now, this is going to be one of those places that is excellent 
for using dynamic fields because each product will have a different value. So when you're loading it up, and this is where meta field starts to come into play. So we're gonna we're still gonna get to that. It's still at the end of the uh, end of the course, but you're gonna see it start popping up every now and again. All right, that is collapsible row. Next up, we are gonna be talking about image collages. Welcome to the collage section. So this is the section where you're going to be able to put a couple elements together. You're going to be able to put a product, you're going to be able to put an image, and you're going to be able to put a collection. And these things will rearrange themselves depending on whether they're on mobile or whether they're on desktop. Let's go over to the computer so we can see how that works. All right, so if we add the section in here called collage, uh, we're going to have a couple of blocks that are added to it. Now, we can only add three blocks based on the layout that was decided by Shopify when they created the theme. But if we go into an image, we can go and select an image. So I'm going to go do that. I'm going to grab a mountain image here and select it. Um, and then we're going to go back over here and then I'm going to go to a product. I'm going to go select a product from our product list. So let's go grab this Doc Martin boot here. Um, and then we are also going to go and select a collection. So we're going to go grab a collection of something. Let's go grab the men's collection and we're going to throw that in there as well. So as you can see, it's now created this multimedia collage. So we've got an image uh, to draw people in. We've got a product for them to go and look at. And then we've got a collection for them to go and, and explore. Now, if we go back over to the mobile side of things, you'll see how this thing lays itself out. It stacks it. So we've got the image, then we got their, their, um, then we got the product and then we got the collection. Now, if we want to change the order in which those come in, we can easily do that by dragging and dropping them and uh, rearranging them that way. Now, if we go back over to the desktop, when you do rearrange it, it's also going to rearrange it on the desktop, giving you a different kind of look and feel. All right, that's how a collage works. Next up is multi-column. All right, a multi-column allows you to set up multiple things side by side. So maybe you have three testimonials and you want them to all show up uh, next to each other on desktop. On mobile, what it will always do is it'll stack them. It'll stack them one, two, and three on top of each other. So if we have a look on our site here, we have a multi-column set up. So we have one column, two columns, three columns. They're now stacked on top of each other. If we switch over to desktop, we're gonna see desktop here, where is it? Sorry, sometimes we lose it. We've got them one, two, and three, pretty self-explanatory. You add additional columns by adding blocks. So if I add in another column, it's going to show three and then go to the next line. Now we can change that. We can change what the multi-column setup is by going into the section title for heading, and then we can go and change the number of columns on the desktop. Now, again, remember that it is I'm mostly going to be able to select those columns on desktop. On mobile, you only have the option of one column or two columns. So if we go over to desktop and we look at, or sorry, we go over to mobile and we switch it to two columns, we have this nice layout here where it shows four columns. Great. But if we go over to desktop, we'll see that it's only going to show four. So now you think, well, what happens if I add a fifth column in here, right? Okay, now it looks great on desktop, but if we go over to mobile, we have this blank space in here. So when you're choosing between how many things to display on a page, you want to, you want something that is both divisible by two as well as divisible by whatever you're showing on the desktop side of things. So if you are choosing um, a desktop side under multi-column, you want to make sure that you choose an even number so that it, it, it shows it properly on both desktop and mobile. So if we go to mobile or we go over to desktop, we can see it's going to show our four before it goes to a new line, okay? And then we can get rid of one of our one of our columns here. Let's remove that. And then let's go over to mobile because we wanted to go two up. We can now see them properly line up. And this is one of the tricky things about when you're working in a responsive web design. You have to make your designs flexible enough to work on a mobile screen, which is a portrait view, as well as work on a desktop view, which is a landscape view. Um, and unless you wanted to actually deactivate and reactivate uh, sections based on which one is being shown, which is something that you can do, but it's just not something that is supported inside the Dawn theme. All right, so going back over to our screen, our next up is multi-row. All right, we're talking about multi-row. Multi-row is just the row equivalent of multi-column, but it has a couple of small, small differences. 
So looking at the multi row here, if we go over to the side multi row, we can add in our rows. Now the big difference with multi row is you don't have to worry about um, the responsive design because you're going vertically. Both devices have infinite scrolls basically. So you can add as many as you need in here because it's gonna fill the whole width. The width is not, ch the height is not gonna be changing. It's gonna be the width when you're talking the difference between a, a mobile phone and a desktop. You can go and select an image. Again, these images are, uh, let's go, let's pick a nice image here. Let's pick this tree image. Um, a lot of these sections inside of uh, Dawn theme allow you to choose an image and choose text. Um, they're just different modifications of the same thing. All right, that is it for our layout stuff. I realize that they're very repetitive. They, they seem to cover the same things, but they just come at it from a different way. The next one we're gonna start getting into is email signups, which is an actual functional way that you can collect customer information directly on your site. All right, we're talking about email signups. Now, as I'm sure you know, collecting a customer's email address is vitally important. Um, that allows you to continue to email back to them and, and communicate with them, bring them updates. Email is still the number one way people interact with their computer. So it's very, very critical that you give them an opportunity to give you an email. Let's go over and see how it's done in the theme. Now, before I jump into this, I wanna talk about email capture. Shopify does offer email capture, but there are better apps that you can use in order to capture email addresses more efficiently, create flows, create signup forms, create fancy stuff. Uh, Clavio is one of them. Uh, the other one is MailChimp. You can use them as well. Shopify has its own um, internal system that this is what happens. So an email signup form will add a customer to your store. So if they fill this out, it's going to add their customer email address into the customers un underneath um, the Shopify system. So um, the email signup section um, is pretty straightforward. You're only really given three options. You have first, you have the subscribe to our email text, which is the heading. Um, you have the uh, description text if you want to put some descriptions in there. And then you have an email form. Um, and the email form will allow them to fill out their information to do that. You, can, you can't add any more blocks. Sorry, those are the only three blocks that you're available for an email sign up. Now, similar to an email sign up is a contact form. So that is what we're going to go over next. All right, we're talking about contact forms. Contact forms are used if you wanna get very specific information from your customers and you don't wanna leave them open to just send you a generalized email. Now, contact forms are usually quite uh, susceptible to spam messages. Shopify offers CAPTCHAs to prevent that from happening and it's gotten quite a bit better in the last couple of years. So let's go over to our screen and have a look at the section contact form. So if we add a contact form in here, we have some pretty simple stuff that we can do. Uh, the contact form is very basic. It's got your name, it's got your email, it's got your phone number, and it's got your comment. And this is only gonna take your information and it's going to email it to you. And it's gonna email it to you to the setting that is set up underneath settings in the dashboard. Now, if you're wondering where that is, I recommend you check out my online course on how to use Shopify 2.0. It goes over everything that is not included with inside of a theme. Now, with the contact form, you've got name, you've got email, you've got phone number, and you've got comment. It is not gonna put these people in as customers. Unlike the email form that we just went over before where it's actually gonna capture their email account, the contact form is not gonna do that. So just something just to keep in mind when you're uh, adding that one in there. All right, we're getting very close. We've got four more sections left to go over and then we're on to the footer. All right, next up is video. Video is something we get asked about all the time and there is a really good need for video on the internet. Christ, I'm doing video right now. It's awesome. However, there is a right place and a wrong place to use it. Using video too much on your site is gonna slow down the load speed and it's not gonna to add to the customer's experience. It's gonna increase your, your, your bounce rate. However, using video in the right way with the right context, nothing works better than that. So let's go to the screen and we can show you how it's set up. All right, you simply add the section in for video um, and you don't have any blocks with video. Video is just a simple section overview. You've got your heading, pretty standard, 
heading size, pretty standard, cover image. So this is the image that you want to be able to click on in order to play the video. So if we've got a video, uh, maybe like a Peter McKinnon video or something like that, that talks about the mountains. Um, you have the URL, so you upload your video to YouTube and then you post paste your YouTube URL in here so that when you click on it, it'll start playing. Uh, you wanna add some alt text to the video. So this is for uh, ADA compliance. It also helps with search engine optimization. You can make the video full width so that you don't have any borders around the outside. Um, and then you can choose your color scheme and the color scheme is gonna be uh, all of the stuff behind it, including the text. Um, and then we've got some padding and we've got our custom CSS like we normally did. Um, and that is the video. Now it's not gonna auto play. This is one of the things that is different about a premium theme to a free theme from Shopify. Shopify is going to give you the recommended way of doing things. It may not be the best user experience, but it's going to be the what they consider the safest way of doing it. And having a video play and then open up in a light box, that is the safest way. Autoplay videos can be annoying to users if not done correctly. So they don't even give you the option to do autoplay on the theme. If you want autoplay, my recommendation would be go with a premium theme that would actually have that option in there or contact us and we would be able to uh, set that up for you. All right, that is for video. Now we got three more to go and then we are all done. All right, we are on to the forgotten child of Shopify, which is blog posts. So blog posts allow you to write some stories about your products, your experiences, that sort of thing, put them on your website, and then you can pull them onto the homepage. If we go to the section, blog posts is very simple. Um, again, some headings, some heading styling. You get to choose the blog that you have created inside of Shopify uh, to display the, uh, the articles. Then you can say, see how many articles are actually shown. So how many blog posts that are being shown, both on desktop and in total. And then you have your background. Um, you can show a featured image if you want to, the date, the author, uh, and a view all button. Again, very, very simple. Not a lot going on when it comes to blog posts inside of Shopify. However, with the additions of now meta fields, we are now able to actually expand that blog module and do more things with it. So bring it in a little bit up to where WordPress might be. We're gonna go over that at a different time, uh, but next up is custom liquid code just on the page. All right, earlier in this course, we talked about custom liquid code in the header. Now we have the same availability to add custom liquid code to the main body of the page. So if we wanted some, we wanted it to be positioned somewhere else. We don't want it in the header. We want it in the main body. This is where we would go and do that. So in order to get that going, we go in and add a section. We call it custom liquid and we have a simple box that we can go and write our own custom HTML and code in there. Now, it's important to re realize that this doesn't have to be liquid code, it can be HTML. So because they have to choose one name, custom HTML or custom liquid, sometimes your premium themes are gonna say custom HTML. Shopify is gonna say custom liquid because it's part of the, uh, the branding around what's going on in Shopify. You simply go fill out your custom code in here, you've got your color schemes and your padding like you normally would. All right, the last piece to go over is a page and it's very, very, very simple. All right, the last section that we have available underneath the template is a page. And really, this is about the easiest as it gets. So let's go over to our screen. And what a page allows us to do is allows us to write a page in the content. So go into the Shopify uh, content management. You go in online store and you go to pages. You go and create yourself a page and then you can pull that page directly onto the home page. So it's essentially asking you to write it somewhere else and then, and then pull it up and display it. When you go to display it, you can see you can go and select the page. So if I wanted to go and select a page here, um, I don't know if this one, any, let's go size chart. Let's see if this, yeah. So we have a page called size chart where we've gone and put the page size, the, the size chart in the description. Um, you have your heading size and you have your background size. That's really all that is available to you. Now, one of the great things you can go over in one of the upcoming sections next after we finish footer is we can add meta fields to those pages. So those pages now we can actually build out a very complex section using a page as our boilerplate. 
I know I'm kind of jumping us a little bit of ahead, but that's what you can have to look forward to when we go over meta fields in chapter six. We have reached the bottom. Oh, I'm so happy. We've got one last thing to go over. This is the footer section. So let's go to my screen. Footer really about the same complexity as the header at the top. You've got the sections that you can add in here. You've got custom liquid, like I said. So if you wanted to add some custom code in there, because there are three sections, header, template, and footer, you've got to be able to add those three in there as well. You also have the option to add email signup. So if someone wants to send an email at the bottom, I'd actually recommend putting an email signup in the footer so that your email addresses uh, get added in there as well. But if we're talking about the footer section itself, the footer section has a couple of items in it. It's got email sign up, subscribe to emails. Um, it's got follow on the shop. So a lot of this is like uh, social media uh, following. It's got payment icons. It's got policy links. Um, and as well as it's got country regional selector if you are using multi-currency. So if you're using multi-currency inside of Shopify and you want them to be able to change between US and Canada or maybe US and the Euro European Union, whatever, whatever you want to switch it to, they can go and switch it there and that's down in the footer. Um, there are a couple of blocks that you can add to the footer. Um, they are menu so you can go and create a menu inside the navigation and add a menu in there so say you wanted like to put a link to all of your policy information so you want to put in uh return policy terms and conditions shipping times those sorts of things you can put those in there you have your brand information so let's go and add a brand information here what's going on in here this is all of the um, stuff that you, you're gonna fill out in theme settings. We'll go over brand in there as well. Um, then you have your mission, um, which is just a text, a text block that you can add. Um, and then you have some info blocks where you can go and add um, menus in there as well. So on a, on a mobile side of things, they just stack vertically. Um, and if you're on the desktop, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see them go over and they're gonna go into columns. So each one you add, it's gonna slowly adjust the columns. My recommendation is go with two columns, a blank space, and then a third column. However, on the on the Dawn theme, you don't have the ability to add just a blank space in there. You have to actually go and create a block to do that. And that's it. We have gone over all of the sections on the homepage inside of the Shopify Dawn theme. Like I said, every theme has a different setup of sections and different sets of blocks. It's just super helpful to go through all of them, see what you're working with and see how things are coming together. The next thing we're going to be doing in chapter three, I believe we're on to, are we in chapter three? No, we're on chapter four next. Next, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going into theme settings and we're going to be going over all of the theme settings that you need to be able to set up to in order to get your site working. And these theme settings are for the whole site. So this is everything outside of the content. So, you know, your headers, your botters, their footers, everything around the outside, um, as well also your checkout, your, your general styles and stuff like that, colors, that sort of thing. All right, we'll see you guys in the next chapter. All right, before we get back to the course, I just want to take a quick, quick moment and tell you guys about this video sponsor. So this video sponsor is Talent Pop. Talent Pop is an outsourcing customer service service which allows you to offload all of your interactions that you need to do with live chat and with customer service requests to a more affordable solution. Now Talent Pop goes out and recruits people in your industry to do your service. So you're getting people who have domain expertise on your specific product. They will also train them and they will have them go through all of your support tickets in order to make sure that they have all of the information that they need in order to support your customers. We use Talent Pop at Sun Bowl and it is amazing. It is a game changer. Having someone available just to do live chats as a virtual front desk so that when people come on and ask us questions, we can get back to them right away has really, really elevated our business. <clears throat> so Talent Pop has given me a link down below, which you can use to go and book a call with them. If you use that link, you can get on a call with them and then they'll walk you through the whole process. Big, huge thanks to Talent Pop. All right, now let's get back to the course. Theme settings. Theme settings can be thought of as the dials on your, or the equalizers on your, on your stereo system. It's the place where you really dial in the specifics of what you want your entire system to, 
to to not to sound like but to to react like so let's go to my screen and we're gonna go over how we what they all mean and what they all do so we're gonna go into customize and where you get to your theme settings um, is you want the little paintbrush on the left hand side here you see this little guy here that's where we want to go so we're gonna pull this up we're gonna go through the theme settings one by one so starting off the top we got our logo so this is where you're gonna be able to go and select your logo so you go select your logo you go and upload it. I highly recommend you use a ping file for that. Something that has a transparent background so that it can be used in different places. And if you change the background color, the logo will sit over top of that. You can change the desktop logo width. So how big it is on the desktop. So let me go and see if I've got one here for you. Let me grab a logo. Uh, do, 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 do I have, let's, let's take the Shopify logo for the heck of it. So once we put the Shopify logo in there, we can change the size of the logo on the desktop size up and down however we want okay then the next thing is the favicon uh, some of you know what a favicon is some of you don't what a favicon is is on chrome you have this tiny little icon that shows up in the tab um, it's not on all browsers not all browsers have a favicon but the ones that do you want to make sure that you put your brand in there because if not you're going to get the shopify S logo by default. So this is one of those detail things that you that I always tell the team that they really need to focus on when you're putting together a site is you want to have that favicon up there. That's logos for you. Next we're moving on to colors. So let's go back over the screen and let's hop into color. So if we open up the color uh, dialog box here we can see there is a bunch of colors that are set up. So we have accent color number one, we have accent gradient number one, we have accent color number two, accent gradient number two. If we go and select one of the gradients, they have predefined, predefined gradients in here. So if you go and select a gradient, I'm not sure if you understand, if you know how a gradient works, but you have a linear and you have a, a conical or a radial one. Um, the two colors, this is the starting color, and then this is the ending color. You can choose where you want the stop in here. So if you want to add multiple colors in here, you can create different types of gradients in here. So if I was creating, say, a sunset gradient and I wanted to change this one from yellow to uh, blue, let's go change it to a blue here. Oh, well, sorry, it came off of the thing. Blue, let's pull that. Oops, well, let me delete that. Color stop, remove that one. So now we have a blue sky sun is coming up to the ocean <laughs> you know you can you can play around with it and you make your own gradient however you want okay you have your position you can change your positions um, and you can change your colors now let's go and remove this gradient we don't need that on there um, there's some preset ones or you can go into css and if you designed your own gradient using css you can go and copy and paste your css code in there as well all right, so closing this up, that is for our accent colors, our secondary colors. So these are not the primary colors. Um, they're used for uh, as foregrounds on background colors. So you've got your text color here. You can click on the on the uh, color picker and go pick that one out there. Um, outline buttons, background buttons, background gradients, and so on and so forth. So if we wanted to say pick a lovely background gradient here, we'll see it change on our store. Um, if you take this radial um, adjustment, it's going to change the direction. So say you wanted it to be something that goes from the top down to the bottom. It's available for you to do that. I mean, you have pretty much any kind of creativity you want to come up with on, um, on the colors that you want to use inside of Shopify. They have now updated the themes and colors so you can go and do this. My recommendation, keep it simple. Follow your brand documents. Make sure that when you're doing the design, you don't go overboard. Don't do something just because it looks cool. Uh, do something because it has a purpose. Uh, so I'm going to go and remove this gradient. And we are going to keep it just its regular white color. Next, we're moving on to typography. One thing people like to change all the time is their fonts. They want to make sure that they have fonts that match their brand. So if we are in... 
the theme customizer um, and we want to change our theme settings. So we go to the paintbrush. We have typography in here. This is where you're going to find your fonts. So you can go and change your font. You can go and select a, a list of predefined, predefined fonts that are inside of Shopify. Now, Shopify uses the Google Open Font Library. So if you go to fonts.google.com, you can go and search which font that you're looking for and you'll be able to find it underneath this heading. Now, you can go and add your own custom fonts in here, but it doesn't make, it's not super easy easy to do. You're going to need to know how to use some custom coding, update the font fire file to your assets, and then update the theme settings so that you can actually pull those fonts in there. I would honestly recommend that you engage with an expert. Sumble, we are experts. We can help you add those fonts to your site if you want, or you can just go and pick one from uh, the Google Font Library. There's quite a few in here. You've got your headings uh, and you have your body, um, and you can change the scale of both of those. And that's fonts. Next, we're talking about general layout of your store. So if we load this up and we go to the layout button, you're gonna see that there are some sliders in here where you can change uh, page width and space between template sections that sort of thing. So uh, page width, by default, it's set to 1200. Uh, if we go back to the early 90s, most people had what would be considered a HD display, 1920 by 1080. Uh, 1200 pixels wide on content will allow you to use your content on most tablets. Most tablets have a screen of 1200 pixels wide, which so if they're using it in landscape, everything will lay out the way that it's supposed to. But if you wanna change that, if you wanna modify that, you can go to the page width and you can slide this slider and it will modify it. Uh, the space between set template sections, this is just the, the padding between each section. So if you look at your site and you're like, ah, everything is a little just too tight and I wanna add this to all of it, this is where you would go and do that. Um, now you can also do the same thing with your, uh, your grid. So everything on your site is done into a grid. It's a, it's a 12 column grid. Um, so if you were putting in a element and you want it to take up half the page, then it would take up six columns. If you wanted to take up a third of the page, then it would take up three columns, basically three columns times three plus three times three which is four, gives you 12, that's how the grid system works. But if you wanna change the spacing beside the, beside the grids or change the, the way the size of the grid, you can do that by um, going and, and changing it in the grid underneath layout. Honestly, I would say, unless you have a really good reason of changing the layout, keep it the way that it's supposed to be. On the internet, things that are the same is what leads to conversion. Anything that's different causes people to have to think twice. And you don't want someone thinking twice when they're about to give you your credit card. Now we are talking about buttons. So these are general buttons across your entire website. So if we pull it up here, we have a couple of sliders that we can change. We can change the thickness of the border around the buttons. We can change their opacity, how translucent they are. We can change their corner radius if you want to have nice rounded buttons or if you want square buttons. You've got the options to change the drop shadows that are on those buttons. So a bigger drop shadow will make it look farther away from uh, the element to a certain degree. Uh, you've got your horizontal offset, so whether you want the shadow going the left or right, you have your vertical offset, which is up or down, uh, and then you have your blur, which is the amount that it's gonna disperse from behind the button. And that's what you have there for your buttons. Uh, the next two sections, we got variant pills and inputs. So let's go to, uh, I'm actually gonna combine both of these into the same uh, lesson because they're all the same as buttons. So you have your, your thickness, your opacity, your corner radius, and then your shadow on below it. Um, and then you have the same thing with your inputs. And inputs are anything that are fields. So like your contact form fields or your email signup form fields. That is what we're talking about when we're talking about inputs. All right, we're gonna talk about product cards coming up next. All right, let's talk about the product card. So this is your viewing of a specific product, which includes like the image, the price, and the call to action. So when we're on settings, we're gonna be able to change how those product cards look. So I've got a featured collection here. This is what a standard product card would look like if we wanted to switch it over to the card layout. Uh, once we've done that, you'll see it change here and it puts them into actual little cards. So separating out the image above. You can change the image padding, you can change the text alignment, you can change the color scheme of what you want it to be. And then the same as the other ones, we've got border and we've got shadow. 
And next, we're on to collection cards. In a lot of situations, collections and products really act very similar. They're just different groupings of the same type of thing. So let's look at our screen. If we're looking at a collection, same thing that we just went over on products. If we go to cards, you can see it's gonna change these items over into cards rather than having them as a standard layout. You have the same kind of uh, adjustments. You have your text alignments, you have your color schemes, you have your borders, and you have your shadows. Let's head on back over to uh, blogs are up next. So you're starting to see a little bit of a pattern develop here with the theme settings. I don't think it's probably pertinent for me to go through every single one of them. So let's just go through the ones that are different. So if we go over to the theme, most of these uh, inputs, so if we go, for example, collection cards, uh, blog cards, content containers, media, uh, drop downs and pop ups, um, and collect, oh, where we go, drop downs and pop ups, then drawers. Um, uh, drawer, badges, um, all have the same kind of adjustments. You can change the border thickness and you can change the drop shadow. So if you're going to go and change them on one, you should definitely go and make those modifications to the rest of them down there. But once you get to badges, you get a couple of little uh, adjustments that you can do. And badges are for like for sale badges or for, um, you know, item badges that uh, show up on a, um, on a on a specific product. So like if it's low in stock or if it's on sale, those are what those badges are for. Okay. Um, then we have our icons. Our icons have just the color of the icons because all the icons inside of um, uh, the Dawn theme are SVGs, you can change the icon color and it'll change the outlines of all of those things. All right, next brings us on to brand information. So if you remember back when we were looking in the footer, there was a uh, call out to add brand information. This is what they were talking about. It's got a headline, it's got a description, and it's got an image. It's very basic stuff. It's just a collection of uh, items that you can go and fill out in the theme settings. Going back uh, before when Shopify was set up, uh, a lot of anything that you wanted to be custom before section existed had to go in the theme settings. So they definitely kept some of that functionality when they went to sections everywhere, but now it is just uh, only for your brand information. Um, okay, moving right along here, we've got our social media icons that you have inside your, uh, for your, your organization. You have your search behaviors, so the things that you want to be able to do, enable search suggestions, show product vendor, and show product prices. Then we have currency format. Um, currency format is how you want to show the currency code of everything that you're looking at. All right, I'm gonna cut it off there because the next three are gonna be a little bit different than what we've just gone through. So the next ones are gonna be cart, checkout, custom CSS, and then finally theme styles. See you then. Okay, when we're talking about taking all of the stuff that people have been shopping and putting it into a shopping cart, we have a couple different options on the um, Dawn theme in order how that is displayed. So the first thing that it's uh, shown is in a pop-up notification. So when you add something to cart, it comes up in a light box and you add it in that way. Similar if you go over here, uh, if we go here and we click on the cart, we can see it takes us to a cart page. Now, um, we also have the drawer type uh, cart, which pulls it in from the side. There's a third one, which is a page, which takes it to the final page, which is the one that we're looking at here. Okay, we can say whether we wanna show the vendor and whether we wanna enable cart notes. Now, cart notes are used for if you have like monogramming or you have special instructions of what you wanna put on a product when something somebody was purchasing it. Say you're selling um, monogram license plates and they want the person's name on there and you wanna show that note on the cart, that's what that cart note is. Um, I also, let me go back over here just for one second. One piece that I missed, which was, uh, it was hiding down here, which is select a collection. So if you wanted to show a collection when the cart is empty to try and uh, convert those people who've gone into a cart, maybe just clicked on it, this is where you would go and set that up. All right, that just leaves us with the checkout page and we're gonna get to that next.
All right, so the checkout page, the checkout page, which is also probably one of the best features of Shopify because they've A-B tested the crap out of it and it is the most efficient way to check out. And also people are used to it. They know what to expect. There's nothing surprising in there. Now, bigger brands may want to adjust the checkout page in order for them to match the brand identity. That is a different conversation. That is when you want to be on Shopify Plus. That's the only way to modify that checkout. But if you're on Shopify Core, you only have two really easy options. You can change the background image of your checkout and you can change the logo. You can change the positioning of where those things show up and you can change the logo size. You have some main content areas where you can change the, um, the background image. You can change whether the form fields are white or whether they're transparent. Um, and then you can change some of the headline colors. You can match the colors of the checkout to your brand so that it still looks like a Shopify checkout, but it is branded to look exactly like your store. Okay, um, and that really covers all of the things inside of the theme settings. Now, there is one more section, which is the custom CSS, which I'm gonna talk about in a moment. All right, so custom CSS, that has shown up a couple times throughout this course. First, it showed up in the header, then it showed up in the template, and then again, it showed up in the footer. Now, why would there be another one that shows up underneath the theme settings? Well, this is for your global changes. This is for everything on your entire store. Now, there are two ways of doing this. You can either do it through the same theme settings. So if we go to our store, we can go to custom CSS, and we can go and use this little box in order to add custom CSS to our entire site. The other way to do it is actually to go into the code and in the code, you can write your CSS right there and it will render. Now, whichever way you decide to do it, you should just pick one. You shouldn't go do it here and go and do it in your, um, in your, in your theme settings because when you're working, you're gonna be lost where the other piece of code is coming from. Honestly, I would say the first place that you should put all your stuff because I'm a developer, I would put it in the theme code. Um, but if you just have a small, small little quick change, maybe it might be easier to put it in the theme settings. This will apply to your entire site. So if you decide that you wanna make all of your um, links uh, capitals, you, could, you would go and do it in here and it would apply it to all the links inside your store. All right, that's a complete overview of the theme settings inside the Dawn theme. That's the end of this chapter. Look forward to seeing you guys in the next chapter. All right, so what are meta fields? There is a lot of uh, language out there about how to explain them, what, uh, what they are. Let me distill it down for you. Meta fields are custom fields. So Shopify provides a boilerplate of the most common fields that you're gonna be using in e-commerce. These common fields are like a product title, a product description, a product vendor, a product category. All of these things are built directly into Shopify. However, every business is unique and every business has special fields that they may want to display to the customer, right? So a meta field is what allows you to do that. Now, meta fields have always been available in Shopify. They've been in there since 2010 when I started working with them. But the big difference that happened in 2020 19, I believe 2019, what they did is they opened up meta fields for everybody to see and use. So now they become easier for you as the customer to access. So in the next chapter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through first how to set up a meta field. Then I'm going to show you how to go and add values to that meta field. And then I'm going to show you how to tie that meta field to your theme so that every time a page loads, it loads a different value depending on the product that it's on. Okay, let's jump into it. All right, to create a meta field, you simply go into your dashboard. So let's go over to my computer screen. All right, one thing I wanna mention is this video is specifically about the Dawn theme. Um, I have another video, which I've linked right here, um, that takes you to a different course. And this course goes over all of the things inside of Shopify. So there are two pieces to Shopify. There is the content and the management, like I showed you in that, that introduction video. And then there is the theme component. This, this course is about the theme, but you do need to work between the two in order to achieve your goal. So here's where we wanna to go to set up a meta field. So if you're on your dashboard, if you go to the bottom left-hand corner, there's a button called settings. Hit settings and it's gonna bring up a menu from the bottom, okay? Once that menu comes up, you're gonna to go to 
uh, custom data. Now they've renamed this, and this is one of the things that happens in Shopify all the time. They rename um, menu items to something different. So then you're like, where is this menu item? Usually it's in the same spot, but sometimes they move it all the plate all over the place. Anyways, it's called custom data at this moment. So once you go in here, you have access to all of the different templates um, that are inside of Shopify. You have products, you have variants, you have collections, you have customers, you have orders, you have locations, you have pages, you have blogs, and you have blog posts. We're gonna do this demo on products. We're just gonna make it easy for us to find. So we're gonna go into products and we're gonna create a definition. Now I know that this can be a little bit scary because it starts to get a little program programmy. Um, and but I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show you how uh, to make this as easy as possible. So we are going to have specific shipping instructions for each one of our products. So some of our products come from different suppliers. Some of them have different shipping times. So we wanna list the different shipping time on our product so that when someone looks at that product, they can go, oh, this product maybe is available for two to three day business shipping inside the US. Awesome. Maybe it's, oh, this has to come from overseas, so it might be four to six weeks in order to do that. Either way, let's go and put in the name of the meta field that we're gonna create. So this is gonna be shipping, um, shipping instructions. Okay, now Shopify is gonna give you some sample, some sample definitions. Um, you can use the sample definitions if you want to. I prefer to write my own definitions because then I know there's nothing strange going on. Um, that sometimes you're like, why is it acting this way? And it's because you used one of their built-in ones. So we're gonna go through it from the beginning. Now, uh, we want it to be available on the storefront. So we wanna be able to pull it on the storefront so that we can see it. Um, and then this will be the description that we wanna call it. So this is gonna be, um, Product shipping times is what we're gonna is what we're gonna call it. Actually, yeah, we're gonna call it product product shipping times. Yeah. And then we have to select a type. Now this is where it gets this is where it gets into some technical stuff. They have data types. So each in a database you have to identify a, uh, a piece of data as a type, and a type can be anything like a date. It can be a number, it can be a string, which is a bunch of words. Um, and we put these kind of restrictions around data types so that when the database goes to look at it, they can perform certain functions on it, right? You can't go do a date compare on a string value because a string value com is composed of uh, letters. So if you have a string value of says like January 2nd, 2023, right? Uh, and it's set as a string value. And then you go and try and do a date compare on that. The, the, the date module is actually looking for 01 slash 23 slash 23. It's actually looking for that date. So you're going to get what's commonly known as a type mismatch error, where it's looking for a specific type and it's generating out and it's not getting the, the expected type that it's getting. So that's a big long way of explaining why these data types are so important to make sure you have the right data type for your um, your meta field. Now Shopify makes it pretty easy. So if we are talking about shipping times, well, we're probably going to be talking about a, uh, a multi-line text. Now the difference in the text, you have single line text, which is just one piece of text. You have multi-line text, which has got multiple lines, so you can put more stuff in there. And then you have rich text. Rich text allows you to put um, formatting on it. So if you want to bold something or you want to underline it, or maybe you want to put a link in there to go to something else, you can go and do that with rich text. I'm going to pick a rich text type because we want to be, you know, a little bit more flexible with what we're going to be doing. So once I've done that, I hit save and Shopify is going to go and create the meta field. And that's simply, that's all you have to do. That's all you have to do in order to create a meta field inside of Shopify. There is now a custom field that is available for all of your products with shipping instructions. Now that that's all set up, I'm now gonna show you how to populate it. All right, we've created the meta field. Now what we're gonna go do is we're gonna add some values in there so that when we pull it up later, we can actually see that it's working. So let's go to my screen. All right, we are on my screen now. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to products and we're gonna pick this Adidas Classic Backpack. Now, when we load up the uh, the product dashboard, if we scroll right to the bottom, you can see this new field has shown up here, right? And it says meta fields. It shows you the, the shipping instructions that we just added in here. So uh, we can go and put something in here, which is like, please, uh, let me just, 
Ah, uh, disruptions, sure. Okay, great. So once we've gone and done that, uh, we can go and do some, um, some, some formatting on it now that it's a rich text. So we can say, uh, let's say two to three weeks from purchase, okay? Uh, we click away and it gives us the option to save it. All right, we have now gone and populated our meta field. And now what we're gonna do is in the next lesson, I'm gonna show you how to link it to the template. All right, now that we've created the meta field and we've now gone and populated the meta field, now we're gonna add it to our theme. So let's go over to our screen. All right, so I go to themes and I go to customize theme. Now, when we're in the theme customizer, what you wanna do is you wanna drop down the menu in the middle and we wanna to go to the product template. Now, I'm only gonna go on the default product template. We covered templates earlier. But once we load this up, we wanna add in a collapsible, a collapsible row that has some shipping instructions in it. So we can either go here and we can click into add the block in here. So we can go here, we can hit collapse little row here and it will add it exactly where we want it. Or we can go and do it the other way, which we've been doing before with adding blocks in there. Now, um, you need to, this is why I it was so important for me to mention types. So if you had set up a rich text type and you're trying to put it into a text field, it won't show up. But if you put in a rich text and it's going into a rich text field, it'll be all good. So row content, click on the dynamic source. It's gonna give you a bunch of images or a bunch of options, but what we wanna pick is we wanna pick our shipping instructions that we've added. All right, once we've added our shipping instructions in here, we're gonna to need to give it a column heading. So we're just gonna go shipping instructions. In instructions, sorry, there we go. Hit save. And now we have our dynamic image instructions when we're on our site. So let's go and preview a product, shall we? So one of the things you can do is uh, we have our, um, our preview product here, um, which is set up to be the Adidas backpack. So if I click on uh, shipping instructions, we can see it shows up exactly the way we want. But if I go and I change my product, so let's say I change it to this other Adidas backpack, it's gonna load up a different one. And if you go under shipping instructions, let's go, let's turn off the inspector so I can use the site. Uh, we're gonna open it up. You can see there's no shipping instructions in there. So we can now create custom meta fields inside Shopify for all of the things that we need to do. So now you have product specific stuff that's gonna show up. It's easy to manage and it's easy to work inside of Shopify. All right, that concludes this entire course. I hope that you learned a lot about how to use the Dawn theme. I hope that I removed some of the fear that comes with trying something new. If you do get stuck, we have resources down below which will help you either get in contact with us or join the Shopify DIY Club where you have uh, an excellent community that will help you get through any of your problems. Of course, we're always here to help. We wanna make sure that your business is as successful as it possibly can be. Thank you very much. And I can now say you are gonna be an expert by Monday on the Dawn theme.